I'm here with Nina and I'm going to be showing you how to make the amazing piggy bag. I invented this many years ago. I'm pretty sure for my pet ferret at the time because if you look really closely at it, it looks like a ferret sleeping bag. But the most amazing thing about this is that there are only three seams in the entire project, yet all of them are hidden. So it is a really nice thing to make and have professional looking results. Let's talk legalese. And that is that I am sharing this pattern with you for free. So the pattern and the sleeping bags are for free. They are not for you to make to sell. So please feel free to make them for your guinea pigs. If you want to give them to your friends guinea pigs, maybe you would like to make them and donate them to rescues or shelters but this pattern is for free. So if you want to share the pattern, please link to my video because it helps little channels like this and it will encourage me to share more projects with you as well. The thing about this pattern was I was in shock when it worked. And I think you will be too because it is so easy and so simple to make. It's all in the folding and once you get it down, you'll probably remember how to make more. Another thing that's really neat about this pattern, if you're like me, a lot of times you'll watch videos, like craft videos on YouTube and you'll be like, oh, that looks easy. And then when you go to make it, uh, <laughs> you realize it was in the editing. But this really is as easy to make as it looks. So if you are new to sewing, um, I don't want you to feel intimidated. I really think you can do this. You can probably sew it by hand if you want to. Um, look up how to make back stitches because that will be the most secure. Let me show you a close-up view. I've made one of these already and with you I'm gonna make the second one because these are for my guinea pigs for Christmas. Basically it is a rectangle. The bottom of it has the one super visible seam right here. The rest of it you don't really see and it's all enclosed so there are no little edges of fabric to chew on or anything. On the correct side you have a pocket here and another pocket here. Your guinea pigs can go on either side, or two guinea pigs can share, but my guinea pig Nina, who is addicted to these things, she'll flip them upside down and just do her own thing, so you know, <laughs> they won't necessarily stay nice and neat like this. All you need is half a yard of fleece. By the entire width, I guess it would be width, of the bolt, which in my case is 58 inches. If you have half a yard, you do not need to make any cuts. You don't even have to cut off the selvage edge. However, we're going to just make it a little bit nicer. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you're like, but I don't have 18 inches, half yard or 18 inches, it doesn't matter. These can be a little bit smaller if you would like. It's not gonna make a huge deal. So if you have, maybe you made a blanket and you have, I don't know, 16 inches left, don't worry about it. You can still make one of these. So anyway, we're going to cut off the selvage edges, which are these ends that were not cut at the store and usually are pretty obvious. Again, you don't have to cut these off, but if you don't, when you sew, you're going to want to go in a little bit farther because you don't want to sew on the selvage. So you would just make sure that you take your seam in a little deeper into the fabric. But I'm going to do this, make it a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to look at the fabric a little bit and decide which side looks nicer. And I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but I know that this is the correct side. We are going to hide the correct side, which in sewing is called putting things right sides together. So the wrong side is out. And we are about ready to make the first seam. So for the very first part of this project, we're going to join the two short ends, the ones that were just cut. And this seam is the most important seam in the entire project because it allows us to turn this right side out. So we need to be very persnickety with this seam. Now, normally, I have to be honest, I rush through these. I usually do not pin or clip them or anything, but since I'm making this video, I'm going to. And since it's your first time making one, I would encourage you to pin or clip it. 
obviously make sure you remove all of those before turning it right side out. You don't want to injure your guinea pigs. We need each corner to meet up perfectly, so I'm going to put a clip there. Now you may have noticed I did not cut perfectly straight. It does not matter. As long as you get both pieces of fabric in your seam, this project is super forgiving, so it doesn't matter. Right here in the center, we're going to leave a gap with no sewing, and that's so the entire project can be turned right side out. I found that I can get by with as little as two inches, but let's go a little bit bigger today just to make sure that we don't run into any problems. It doesn't have to be directly in the center. You don't have to measure anything. You just need to make sure that you leave a significant gap there. I wanted to comment on the thread before we get started too. I love cotton thread. That's my go-to, but in fact, I have my spare bobbin thread just sitting there. Um, but for this, Cotton could shrink. It also is a little more breaky in my opinion. So I would recommend using polyester thread for it. I'm going to sew from this pink clip to this blue clip. I'm going to skip this area and then I'm going to sew from the orange to the orange. Something really important is to go back and forth here, back and forth here, back and forth here, back and forth here, back tacking because you don't want the seam to rip out. Seam allowance is not important for this project at all. <laughs> the main thing is you need to make sure that all the layers are caught in the seam. So, so you could just say like, okay, the edge of my sewing machine foot, but it doesn't matter. If you find that you're kind of veering just a little bit, this pattern is really forgiving and just don't worry about it. I'm just backing up, going forward and back to make sure that that's really secure. And then we're going to go to this first clip here. Again, I'm going to go back. Forward and back. Now I'm going to be skipping until I get to the next clip so that we're leaving the turning gap here. All right, now I'm at the part where the other clip was. Remember, we're skipping and leaving a gap and I'm gonna sew to the end. But we're gonna back up. Forward and back, forward and back. I'm doing back tacking here too and you really wanna be careful and do this because Everything has to be turned through that hole and you don't want your thread to rip out there. Next, I'm cutting the threads off and this isn't necessarily important because they're all going to be hidden inside, but I still like to do it. I just don't like the thought of my guinea pig somehow finding them and chewing them. Now we're to the really amazing part where you're going to wonder why does this even work? Because I know that's how I felt when I made it. Normally, I probably wouldn't even measure this. Um, I just go by sight, but let's make it a little bit nicer because I'm making it for a video and you might want to be really precise with it, unlike me. I'm measuring this, not counting the seam, and the total is 28 inches. I'm going to take 28 inches and divide it by 2 and get 14. What I want to do is take this seam that has been created and put it directly in the middle, which is going to be 14 inches. So we're just going to eyeball it first and then fiddle around till it's 14 inches. All right, I have it good enough for me. I wanted to mention make sure you measure both of the open ends because they can shift diagonally instead of at the same rate. So I have checked and about every quarter is at 14 inches at this point, at least close enough for me, like I said. Again, I'm not very good at measuring and all that type of stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and clip these right here. What I'm doing is I'm clipping the center seam to the bottom right there just to mark about where the middle is. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. This part 
gets a little bit confusing if it's your first time making one of these. I'm going to be showing you with a clip again because I think it will be easier to see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and put a clip here and I'm going to put a clip here. I'm going to be taking this part of the sleeve bag and actually folding it in on itself. Basically we're making an M shape or a W shape. Rather than going like this or, you know, going like that on the bottom, it's actually folding in on itself like this. I'm going to take this and hold it by this part and then kind of flare it open and then drop it down. And then I'm going to adjust this until this meets up with the other one. Hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little strange. Then we're going to fold this part back. And I'm going to fiddle around until I get this little fold lined up perfectly with the center. And these lined up perfectly. So we want all four layers to lie flat. And for this little fold to be directly in the center. In fact, I want to take my clip off, put that in there, flip it. So once I have these four layers even on this edge, I'm going to clip those as well. So I'm going to do this three more times. I have one side all clipped, so I wanted to show you what it's going to look like, which is really confusing but it's going to open on the end like this. I know, it makes no sense, but <laughs> that's how it works. I'm going to do the same thing on this side now. And when you get to the middle, it is really nice to have both of the inner folds touching and just right up next to each other. I can show you what happens if you don't do that. You will end up with a gap here. There's quite a significant gap on this one. It's not a big deal, your guinea pigs won't notice it, and I definitely wouldn't undo seams and redo it because you don't see it after a while, but I still aim for it, I just don't always achieve it. I've done the other side, and again, you have this weird pocket that looks like it's where it should not be. To hopefully make this an easy visual, your seams create an H. So the other two seams that you do are perpendicular to the center seam. That means that these raw edges that have four layers are what we're going to sew next. This is harder on your sewing machine than it is on you. And what's nice about both of these is that there is no leaving a hole. You just obviously back tack, sew, back tack, and that's it. Then you turn around and you do it on the other side. Again, seam allowance doesn't matter. In fact, we've got a rectangle going on here, so you've got quite a bit of wiggle room for sewing these ends. The main part with sewing these, each of these sides, is to make sure that you're going through all four layers. Like I said, it's harder on your sewing machine than it is on you, and you can check it when you're done. So Full disclosure, it is hard to sew while you're standing at an angle. I had to redo stuff multiple times and it's still not perfect. I didn't even bother with my inner part meeting because I know it works even if it's not perfect. But when you're done sewing these, you want to just check the ends and make sure that you have sewn through all four layers. That's really important. And then we're just going to cut off all the threads again. Alright, just like that we are totally done with the sewing machine. Which is great in my case because we're not getting along very well today. Everything that's in this bag now has to be put on the right side out. I recommend grabbing a corner and pulling that first. And then everything should basically follow after it. Just push, flip. Try not to put too much stress on the um, seam here because you don't want it to rip out. And then you just use your hand to push the corners out. don't have to use a turning tool or anything. We've already got the sleeping bag pretty much mostly done. I wanted to show you something that can happen when you make these sleeping bags. 
when you go to turn them right side out, you might end up with a pocket on one side and another pocket on the other side and be like, oh no, what did I do wrong? If you didn't do anything wrong, it just didn't turn quite all the way out yet. So you find the center seam right here and that's the bottom. So just make sure that both of the pockets are on the same side and it's not the side with the center seam. I'm going to share a little secret with you guys. I usually don't close this. Um, I'm trying to be better about that lately, but I've never had a guinea pig try to go in it. I've never had poop get stuck in it, but all of that is knock on wood. So let's go ahead, make it totally finished and safe for your piggies. I'm going to cut a fairly long piece of thread because I'm going to be doubling it up. I'm thinking you're probably not going to be able to see the thread, but I did pick a large needle, so I hope you can at least see this. And I'm going to cut this. I saw this tip in a Sewing with Nancy book, and it is the best tip for sewing. In a lot of people, will, when they double thread, will put the loop through the needle, and then you have to tie knots on the end. So what you can do instead is take both of the ends of the thread and put them through the eye of the needle instead. That way you end up with a loop on the bottom instead of two ends that have to be knotted. In order to close this bag, I'm going to be doing a ladder stitch, which is great because it's pretty much completely hidden. You will see a knot. And it's just amazing when you make these bags, if the only piece of thread you see is a tiny little knot. In order to secure this thread to the bag, I'm going to put the needle through. Well, you can see this. And then when I see this loop, I'm going to put the needle through the loop and pull. And that way you don't even have to make a knot to start your thread. For the ladder stitch, you basically go back and forth. So I'm going to go on the right side, then a little bit on the left side. The raw edges of fabric will just kind of naturally turn in and you want to leave them that way as you go up and make your ladder stitch. So I'm going right, left, right. I'm going to go all the way up and then I'll show you how to end it. I think something nice about me having so much trouble with my sewing machine in making this sleeping bag is I was able to show you that you can sew it really poorly and it'll still turn out nicely. <laughs> Once you have finished sewing this, you just want to make some knots and make sure that this thread is really secure and won't come out. Once you've made some knots, put the needle in pretty much directly over your knot. Put the needle inside, making sure that it's not coming through to the inside of the bag, but is actually hidden between the two layers, and push it out. So we're just hiding the thread inside, and then cut the thread off. Remy is here to help me say goodbye and mention just a few more things about these sleeping bags. First of all, in a very short time today, I was able to make two. They really are very, very quick to sew. The other thing I thought you might be curious about is the cost. I got fleece that was on sale and isn't licensed, but I did run the math and each one was $2.64. <laughs> Let's talk about what you can do with these. If you have an animal like a ferret, you can add hooks in each corner and hang them in a cage. For guinea pigs, you can just leave them on the ground like this. My guinea pig Nina loves these things. She doesn't necessarily keep them like this. She'll flip them upside down and do whatever she wants. Something else that's really nice to use these for is for lap time with your guinea pigs, especially if you have a guinea pig that doesn't feel totally secure. They can get in there and, and feel more secure. I love using them with new baby guinea pigs because they will feel warm and secure as they're getting used to you and getting used to lap time. The last thing I wanted to talk about is that when you make something for yourself, you can use whatever fleece fabric you want. 
It can be a licensed print. Um, maybe you like someone from a movie or a book or a sports team. You can use whatever you want because it's not legal for people to sew and sell things made with those prints. A lot of people do it anyway, but they're not supposed to. But because you're making it for yourself, you can use any print you like in the store and not have to worry about that. My goal in sharing this pattern is to help enrich your guinea pigs' lives and hopefully your friendship with them. I hope you really love this pattern and that your guinea pigs enjoy it as much as mine do. Bye!